as mentioned, I'm the uh, chief DevOps evangelist at Perfecto, which is a Perforce company. I'm thrilled and honored to be uh, accompanied with uh, Stefan uh, from Intact, uh, Director of Quality Engineering. Uh, hi, Stefan, how are you? Hi, Ren, I'm good, thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Emilia, for the opportunity to be here today. So uh, it's an honor just to be part of this event. So my name is Stefan Malte. I'm a QE manager at Intact Financial Corporation. Uh, just a quick introduction about me. So I've been working in the QE field for almost 20 years now. So I work in different kinds of company from small to large businesses, businesses and also in uh, public and private uh, domains. And also um, I've worked with Intact for the past three years now as, as a quality manager. So I'm going to start sharing my screen so we can start the session. Just let me know if you, just a second, share. There you go, you should see my screen. Yes. All right, so we have uh, 30 minutes together for this session and uh, there will be a Q&A at the end. So don't hesitate to send us your questions. So pandemic driven testing. Yeah, I know pandemic, this is a word that you probably heard too much in the last year, but please bear with us. So it's been a year that now that we are living in this new reality and we know that this pandemic changed a lot of things in our lives. Uh, some of these changes will probably be permanent, but uh, some of them also will define our next normal. And today, what I want to discuss with you is how this pandemic affected our lives as QA professional. Uh, during the last year, we went through a lot of challenges, not only to continue our work from home, but also to answer the exponentially growing demand from our customers. So uh, yes, it was a rough year for everyone probably, but if you're like me and you prefer to see the good side of things, you will realize that those challenges also created a whole lot of new opportunities for us. And that's really what I wanna focus on for today's session. So before we dive in, I'll take a brief moment to introduce our organization. So Intact Financial Corporation is the largest insurance company in Canada. I want to give a brief overview of our strategic plan so you better understand our mission here at Intact Lab. So these are the objectives that IFC has been focusing on in the past years, and I won't go through the details of everything, but I want to bring attention at the first objective about the customer engagement. Um, more specifically, we want to have three out of four customers to be actively engaged with us digitally. And the word actively is really important because logging in once a year on our platforms is not what we can consider actively engaged. We want users to come back on a regular basis and that's something easier said than done because in the end industry, typically most people will think about their insurance maybe once or twice a year. So we think as an organization, this is where we can differentiate ourselves from our competitors by generating that engagement with the customers. And one of the reasons I decided to work with Intact is because this company specifically chose to, inge to invest in technology to win the marketplace. So um, quick introduction about the Intact Lab department where I'm working. Uh, so at the lab, we have over 200 experts in technology and user experience. And uh, our mission is to support the organization corporate objective by building second to none digital solutions. So we have uh, today 20 teams working with all business units in their digital transformation. And all in all, this represents more than 240 releases per year for the web and mobile applications that we have. Um, and now quick word about uh, our Q organization. So to deliver quality, our recipe is pretty simple. So first of all, you need the best talents. And uh, personally, I consider that we do have the very, very best talents of the industry. And, I want to give them credit for everything they do because without these people, it would not be possible to achieve the objective I just mentioned. So again, you need to apply the best practices and this is what we try to do. So our team is constantly striving to improve what we do and how we do it. And finally, um, also you need to work with the best tools. And this is why I'm here today with the run from Perfecto to talk about cloud solutions and also continuous testing. So we know that um, the pandemic had a significant effect on digital engagement. In fact, it drove the engagement exponentially to a point that we've never seen before. We've made more progress in the last year than during the whole lifetime of our applications. 
So in terms of numbers, uh, first, uh, with the adoption, we've measured an increase of 50% client account created since pandemic. This is the biggest growth since the launch of our application. And here we are talking about major applications that have been online for years. On mobile only, last year, we doubled that number. And uh, now in terms of engagement, we have increased uh, by 100% the number of monthly users. On mobile only, again, we increased that number by 2.5 times. So looking at this number, we can now confirm also that mobile overtakes web in terms of traffic and online completed tasks. So when you look at this, you can understand why all organizations are suddenly feeling the, 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 the urgent need to, digital, to, digi to go digital every, everywhere. So anyone who cannot keep up with the demand right now will probably be left behind in the dust. And the organizations who were in a good position before the pandemic, they can really leverage the situation to, to accelerate their roadmap and increase the gap with their competitors, actually. And maybe just one word, uh, Stefan, uh, to, to your previous point, uh, you know, quality, and I've been in quality for over 20 years now, quality is always uh, uh, people's state and it's correct. It's a moment in time. Today it works, tomorrow it can't work. Uh, and uh, as we speak today, um, Apple is just seeding its iOS 14.5 fourth beta. So it's almost on a monthly basis that you see these digital disruptions that uh, really mandates you to be on top of things and do this continuous testing. Otherwise, you might lose uh, in the battle with engagement uh, with your own users. So that's a great point, uh, Stefan. Yeah, totally. So uh, having that said, you can understand uh, why the last year was so crazy in the IT industry. And not only we had to support this acceleration, but also we are facing some challenges with uh, remote working, as you know. So in terms of QA, uh, the challenges uh, we had first is uh, with the velocity. So most of the developers agree that they are more productive from home. And because of the dev QA ratio, even a slight increase per dev will add up. And this can mean a significant increase for the RQAs in terms of workload. And while we have more pressure on us, we're facing some challenges in terms of also communication and collaboration. Uh, as you know, QA is not only about testing feature, QA is also human work. So to be efficient, you need a good amount of communication and collaboration with every member of the team. And this is hard to replicate while working remotely. And uh, finally, when we suddenly had to quit our offices one year ago, we lost access to some of our QA tools in our stack. Uh, for example, at the lab, we had a big locker with more than 60 mobile devices. Uh, so suddenly when we, we, we had to work from home, we lost access to those devices. And also just in terms of test environments and test data, everything was secure behind a firewall. So it was not easy to continue our work from home from day one. So yeah, pandemic brought us a whole lot of new uh, challenges, but at the same time, I think it brings us opportunities, opportunities to learn, adapt, uh, and also get better at what we do. Um, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, I think it was our CEO who said in a meeting, how as an organization, can we make sure to exit the situation in a better position than we were before? And I think that's exactly the mindset that everyone in QA should have right now. All leaders in quality, we have a roadmap on our table. We have been working on for a while and we are constantly trying to push new ideas, new methods, new tools to improve quality. And I think now is the time to seize that opportunity, that opportunity to accelerate what we do. Uh, to make the change, we believe we need to make a giant leap in the QA practices. And to me, this is the definition of resilience. And this is what will make the difference between those who will succeed or fail to go through this pandemic. Um, now that we know how the pandemic affected our customers uh, and also our work, let's look at how we tackle some of these challenges in mobile testing. So the first uh, Intact Mobile app was released in 2017. Uh, we have put a lot of efforts in, on this app for the past three years to bring us where we are today. Our application, which is available on the uh, Apple and Google stores for our three brands, is currently sitting at position one, two, and three in the rankings of uh, their category. Uh, we have over one million downloads as of today, and we are maintaining our rating close to 4.5 stars with more than 60,000 uh, reviews. This is something I think is worth mentioning because uh, in, the in the insurance industry, this kind of rating is really not easy to achieve just by considering the nature of what we do. And uh, all in all, for the mobile team last year, we published 30 new updates of the app. And if you multiply this by the number of platforms, brands, 
This brings us to a total of 180 versions that have been tested and signed off by our QA team. Uh, in terms of mobile native development, I think that's probably as close as you can get with continuous delivery. So mobile testing has its own set of challenges. First of all, there is a lot of manual testing to do. If you build a mobile app on top of your existing ecosystem, the app in itself is mostly a user interface. So you have a lot of integration testing and also a lot of UI testing. And if you want to keep up with development and automate everything as you go, you will probably need an army of test automation developers. So because most of the team cannot afford a one-to-one -one dev test automation ratio, most of people will mainly rely on manual testing to be able to close the stories as they go. So second challenge with mobile uh, testing is uh, with native development. So developing on iOS and Android means you have to test everything twice. So this doubles the amount of work that you have to do in terms of manual and automation. Um, and finally, there is also the device fragmentation issue that's here to stay. So uh, as you know, there are so many different devices used by our customers that it's impossible to cover everything when you test. And one, one, just a short comment from my end, uh, Stefan, also on the challenges of mobile testing. I think it's also the complexity of automating, uh, I would say, advanced scenarios. Mobile, it's not just, uh, you know, the, uh, the large uh, number of devices and permutations, but it's also, you know, interacting with sensors and in incoming events and the environments and the network conditions. So it's uh, the full mobile environment that also challenges us on how to do, whether it's mobile uh, manual testing or automation, the scenarios themselves are much harder uh, and are becoming harder as we progress with technology. Yeah, totally. Uh, actually, the, the, the mobile development opens a world of possibilities with the different technologies that are not available on the web. For example, in our mobile app, we have telematics. So uh, this kind of thing is really hard to test. And this is a, another challenge that we have today. Um, also, uh, another thing is that if you're doing a lot of manual testing and you don't invest enough in automation, at some point, you will face what I call the black hole of regression testing. So as you know, the application complexity grows exponentially and also so does the uh, regression test suit. At some point, the regression testing will overtake probably over everything that you do. And uh, you will have to sacrifice other important things such as, for example, exploratory testing. And just like a black hole, it will swallow everything in its way and probably also employee engagement because people don't like to do the same thing over and over and after some time they will get tired of it. So uh, in our case, uh, when we decided to put in place the release trains of two weeks, we quickly realized that regression testing was representing 50% of our sprints in terms of QA efforts. So uh, spending half of your QA time on repeating the same test cases over and over is not what we can call added value task, I'm sure you agree. So knowing that this will just keep growing, this is simply not sustainable. So this is where automation testing comes to the rescue. First of all, all experts agree that it should not be the main objective, but let's be honest, the first reason why we do automated testing is to reduce the workload on the manual QAs. In our case, uh, the, manual QA the manual QA became the bottleneck to our release cycle, so it became very obvious that we had to invest in automation if we wanted to keep up the same pace. And also automation will free up time to your manual QAs. It will give them room to breathe and to do other added value tasks, such as exploratory testing, and in the end, this will translate into increased value for your product. Automation also allows you to have better coverage because you don't have to do risk-based testing. You can run the full regression every day on a variety of devices, and at the same time, it will address the fragmentation issue. So again, this allows you to, to increase the quality of your product. And once you have good coverage, automation will allow you to reduce the release cycle time. In our case, before using the test automation, we needed about four days to publish a new release of the app. And as of now, we already cut by 50% the time needed to release. And the target for the next three months is to reduce the release cycle time to one day. Um, in terms of cost, some argue that test automation testing is an expense and cannot be done to, to reduce the cost. But personally, I think it's possible to get a positive return on investments on those tests. Just in terms of manual testing, reducing our release time from four days to one day represent a yearly saving of more than 2,000 hours in manual testing for us. Second, also, we all know that the shift left approach allows you to catch the defects earlier in the process, so it will reduce the cost of those set issues. 
And this one is really harder to measure, but in my opinion, this is the real value of investing in continuous testing. And finally, the last advantage is that automation ensures consistency. So you can be sure that automated tests will produce the same results over and over while with manual testing, uh, you're prone to human error. So now uh, when we talk about mobile automation, again, there are some challenges specific to it. Um, and I remember back in 2018, I went to a software testing conference and the first session I attended was about mobile automated testing. And I remember the, the, the speaker, the first thing that he said to us is, if you can afford not to do it, just don't. He was saying that we should wait a couple of years until we come up with better solutions, because if we try with what we have available as tools on the market right now, we, mo we will most likely fail at it a couple of times before succeeding. So uh, I got back home and then I asked myself, what do I do with this? <laughs> so anyway, I decided to go with it. And finally, I, I have to agree that mobile test automation is not an easy journey, but I think continuous testing is more necessary than ever as we've seen. Um, and I will show you that succeeding and it is possible if you apply the, the best practices. So first challenge with mobile automated tests is execution time. So we have a scaling problem here because we're talking about UI testing. As you know, UI tests tend to add up quickly and it won't take long before your regression test suit will take hours to execute. Second challenge uh, is running the test. So if you run locally on real devices, um, the automation consumes your resource and you cannot do anything else while you run the test. Third challenge with mobile automation is building re reliable tests. So as you know, UI automation uh, tends to be flaky and if you don't have a good test architecture, it will be hard to maintain a high success rate. Another challenge, like we mentioned before, is the device coverage. So if you are locally, you're really limited by the number of devices you can run at the same time. And the last one is integrating the mobile automation suite into the CI CD pipeline. So it's not e as easy as uh, web automation. The tools are not mature as, the, as much as the web. And also you will probably need to build a custom solution to fit your pipeline. One comment for me, Stefan, on the, the challenges. I think that uh, one of the important things to mention, especially on mobile, is the lack of predictability. Because when you are dealing with a real device in a real environment, the unexpected pop-ups, alerts, um, you know, incoming events that uh, when you are properly creating test automation and planning for those, you're in a good position. But when you're uh, right uh, pushing the test into the CI or in your regression suite without really uh, dealing with these unexpected pop-ups and alerts, this can break your entire automation. And this also is a huge, huge challenge for mobile testing. Yeah, you're right about this. So to continue, um, after we stubbed our toes on, on those challenges I just mentioned, we decided to explore different options and cloud solutions to address our needs. Uh, first of all, we wanted to reduce the test execution time by using parallelization to solve the, the scaling issue. Also, we wanted to free up local resources so we can continue working while the tests are running in background. Uh, we needed to have access to a larger pool of device to run our automated tests. And finally, um, we wanted to be able to integrate our tests into our CI CD pipeline. And at the same time, we found out that there are other advantages of using a cloud solution. First, in terms of reporting, they can provide far more advanced tools than anything you can develop internally. And uh, second, the pool of devices can also be used for manual testing. And this is a big plus with remote work because you know a mobile device is costly. And if you have a big team, it's difficult to provide everyone with physical devices. So I think a mobile cloud is, is really helpful for people who don't need access to a mobile device full time. So um, in terms of choosing your solution, first advice I would give um, is don't get fooled by the, the don't get fooled by the vendor's pitch. Uh, to be honest, uh, earlier in my career, I learned it the hard way and you want to try before you buy. So uh, you want to choose a solution that actually fits your needs based on your own assessment. Uh, we did a proof of concept using three different solutions. So in terms of criteria, first, we were looking at performance. The solution needed to be as seamless as a real device. Second criteria was the ease of integration. You want it to be as much plug and play as possible, and you don't want to spend hours instrumenting your tests to make them run in the cloud. Uh, the third aspect was the reporting, because this will help save time when debugging the test. And also, uh, you want to bring visibility to the team, so reporting is, is, is essential to do this. 
And last one, but not the least, customer support. So it's important to not over customer support because you will need it in your journey and it can make the difference between a success or fail. And uh, about this one, I can say that uh, in the end, I'm really happy that we chose to go with Perfecto because they have been more than helpful in our journey to continuous testing. Actually, for us, Perfecto is not only a provider, they are a success partner. So they allowed us to leverage cloud solutions way faster than if we were left on our own. What you see here now is a snapshot of our testing dashboard uh, in Perfecto. In February, we've been running our full regression test suite on a daily basis uh, with a daily pass rate of around 98%. So that's more than a thousand tests that are running uh, in the cloud every day. And um, to trust your automation, really, this is the, I think, the only way you can achieve it. So you need to run often, you need to keep the success rate high, and then um, achieving this kind of result is not easy, especially in UI testing, as you know, because front-end tests tends to be flaky. And if you only have also a good test architecture, you will most probably struggle to keep up with the, the, maintenance, uh, the maintenance of those tests. A um, couple of advice on how you can reach uh, these kind of numbers. Um, first advice uh, would be to decouple your test from your backend. So remember that the objective here is to verify your application. So testing end-to-end -end with real data can only cause more failure reasons. Um, in our case, what we did is that we developed a marking solution to be able to validate all the different use case in the mobile app without relying on the test environment. So this ensures consistency. So every time that you run the test, you're sure that if you have a fail, it's not because the test environment is down or the test data has changed. Uh, second, also, you want to run your test as often as possible. So running once every two weeks is not enough to get feedback about your test and to learn what's causing them to fail. Running the test on, also on a daily basis will help you to minimize the number of false negatives. And it's really important that you don't let the fail stack up. You should fix them as you go and always shoot for 100% pass rate. And finally, like I mentioned before, it's important to have a good test architecture. So you should keep the test small. Each test case should have only one objective. And in terms of architecture on our side, we decided to use the page object model with uh, design pattern, which is very well known. And uh, this helps a lot building and maintaining efficiently uh, the test. Stefan, just one comment here. Uh, I think you mentioned all the key best practices in test automation. And we see that when you follow the best practices, you really get uh, amazing passing uh, rate uh, within your CI. Um, just one uh, additional comment here, what you can also see in this dashboard that uh, Stefan is showing you, you can see also the history of all these builds that are running and you can see and actually act upon if you uh, get like a build, specific build that's starting to spike up and takes too long, it means that you might have an issue with a specific environment or a specific test that just became more lengthy and you want to take care of that. So uh, having the right visibility into the pipeline and as Stefan mentioned, uh, continuously monitor and improve your pipeline obviously contributes to such a green dashboard, which we all want uh, as QA guys to see. So uh, this is really good stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and obviously we didn't get to this point uh, day one. So it took us a couple of time, uh, a bit of time before we get there. Actually, uh, if I would show you the testing dashboard, uh, we started running on in the pipeline uh, three months ago. So in the, the, the first runs, you would see a lot more fails. And then once you can run more often, you can learn about your tests, you adapt, you do modifications, you change. And then uh, this is uh, only um, in a couple of times that you can, you can reach this kind of number. But in the end, this is the blue sky that you should be shooting for. And as you can see, it's achievable. So we're already at the end of this session, and I'm telling myself with the title we chose, uh, probably some of you were expecting to learn new revolutionary tools or methods in testing, and I hope you will forgive me for tricking you into this. Uh, the truth is, we can do as much testing as we want, use technology, automation, AI to accelerate in the end. Uh, to me, testing does not produce quality. If you want to generate quality solutions for the clients, quality must be present at every level of the organization. If you want to have adoption, engagement, satisfaction from your user, um, to me, qual culture of quality is more important than any kind of test you can perform. As they say, it's always better to do it right the first time than fixing it later. 
And uh, I would end on this, um, changing culture in big organizations take a lot of time and efforts, as you know. And if there is one takeaway I would like people to remember for this session is that this pandemic can be used as an opportunity to drive change. In our case, we use the context of the pandemic to integrate cloud solutions in our test tool stack. At the same time, uh, we've, been able to we've been able to enable remote testing in conjunction with also with our internal test environments. And finally, we made the giant leap in our continuous testing journey. So these are all things that were on our roadmap for a while, and some of them were not even possible before, just in terms of security. Uh, most financial organizations are not really open to work with cloud solutions, but uh, this pandemic really opened new doors. And uh, I think uh, that we need to seize that, oppor that opportunity. So uh, in conclusion, whatever the scope of the change you have in your, your map, I firmly believe that you should use the momentum created by this pandemic to deliver, to accelerate the changes that you need to deliver quality.